Tanqua Artscape 2023. Okay, um, I'm Kieran, I'm an artist. I primarily paint and animate, um, but I work in quite a lot of different mediums. And my work mostly revolves around a character that I developed that represents the small spark of hope that is in us when we're born. Um, the hope that sort of over time gets affected by getting a bit jaded or cynical and my work sort of revolves around this personification of that hope and sort of how it reacts. Now it's it's grown a little bit more to almost become a, a little person of its own um, but in essence that's, that's... Is it a digital? Um, so his name is Imaginary Friend and I designed him initially digitally first from illustrations and then um, I modeled him in 3D but he appears in all my work. He's in paintings, he's in 3D prints, he's in a bronze sculpture now as well, quite recently. Okay. And here at Tonkwa, he'll be an earth, clay, rock sculpture as well. And why is it a he and not a she? So for me personally, um, like I said, it, it represents a part of a person. So I okay. refer to him as a he, but... I would like to think that over time, as, as people get to know him, that for me he's a he, but for them it could be a she or a they or whatever, whatever you identify as to, to sort of make it a representation of your own. So you would give it away? You would give him away? I would allow people in a way to find their own version of him so meaning for me the spark of hope is a he because i identify as a he okay for you that spark of hope might be a she or a they or i uh, i really like to imagine that that people look at the work and see themselves in it or parts see, of themselves yeah. in okay it. so i do have other characters but imaginary friend for the last year or so has has been my my main focus what brought you here to this arti artist in residency program? So the first thing that that sort of introduced me to the program, made me aware of it, um, was a friend, I would almost say a mentor of mine, um, that did the residency last year. Okay. Uh, along with his wife and another colleague of theirs. And um, they're ceramicists, for the most part, um, and I sort of saw the work that came out of the residency and I was almost a bit surprised at first that it wasn't a, a clay piece or, you know, a, a ceramic piece or a, a vessel of some kind. And at the same time, um, it was sort of amazing to me how I didn't know if it was the landscape or if it was the people or the spirit of the residency in general, but something brought out this other type of work that was that was unfamiliar to me as someone who you know follows his work and that was that was really interesting to me and i was hoping to to experience a bit of the same so what do you experience the last week exactly that <laughs> exactly Be that come a little bit more precise maybe give us an example that we better understand so for me personally, um, I've never worked with earth or land art um, or even physical sculpture like by hand um, at all, basically. And it wasn't even my initial idea to to work with those mediums at all. And sort of the, the people that I've met here and the things that I've seen while lying around, like walking around, sitting around, lying around in in the landscape here has sort of triggered me in a similar way to where I would walk in the city and maybe see a crumbling bridge or a piece of graffiti or a piece of signage. Here, all of those factors were different. And also the, the people that were speaking to me about the work and helping me and developing 
the idea had such such different knowledge such like very deep knowledge about things that are completely unfamiliar to me so although i would say that the work sort of speaks to my larger body of work um it's very much materials that are foreign to me the sort of the positioning of the sculpture in the landscape and also literally half into the earth is is quite is quite new and different to me and I, I feel like that that is kind of what I was hoping to experience. Which part of your original plan of what you have applied for is still here and what has changed? All Besides of it. Besides all of it, completely? I, yes, so I wouldn't say anything has changed because I'm still going ahead with the original idea and it's about 75% done. Separate to that, I have the larger sculpture that is that was completely unplanned for. So the idea that I applied with, which was to bring a 3D print here of the character, imaginary friend, and to have him respond to the environment and use materials from the environment and, and coat him in them, that's still happening. The, the small scale sculpture is here, he's not too far from done, and then the, the land art is a completely new thing. I want to say separate thing, but visually they correspond quite a bit, so I won't say separate, but yeah. The landscape here, is this your first time in the crew? I think so, Un unless, you know, maybe we drove through here a long time ago yeah. when I was a child or something, but as far as I know, yes. So what does this landscape do to you? I'm not sure if it does something, it's quite an active way to put it, like it, it intentionally does something. But I would say that I, I find my, my eyes and my senses reacting slightly differently. Um, it, it is a completely different environment, so where normally I would be sitting and painting in my studio, listening to music, now I'm sitting in this almost infinite flat space there are no walls. So I often look up and see different types of rocks or different types of foliage or the sky. So those those influences are switched out. Then I'm not listening to music. So the things that I hear are, today I saw a little springbok and it made a little noise behind me and I got a massive fright because I realized like I'm not listening to anything at all. Like nothing is blocked out. Um, so even flies buzzing and like hearing the breeze slightly and, and also just the, the dead silence at times. So I would say with, with all of those influences switched out, it's almost impossible for the environment not to have an impact. Um, and, you, you know, you're seeing different things and you are hearing different things. And, and it all kind of, I think, plays some small part together to affect this massive change of the influences that you experience while you're working. Mm. And in that way, yes, I would say the environment does things, <laughs> if that makes sense. If you would have to describe this landscape in five words, what would these five words be? Well, I've already used one of the words, and that's infinite. I think as as far as our limited sight and hearing and, and feeling goes, it's you can reach up or to the sides or, you know, even run some distance without touching anything at your height level or above you. or So it feels quite infinite to me. Um, it's quite barren and dry. I think that's also maybe a bit of a misconception I had when I first got here is I looked around and it came to mind that there was nothing here. Um, but there wasn't nothing here. <laughs> there was actually a lot here. So that would lead me to my, my third word, which 
doesn't answer the question directly, but I would say scale, where the trees aren't very tall, but they go on as far as you can see. And the, the rocks in the landscape aren't very intrusive to your vision. But if you look down, there are hundreds of little different shaped yes. rocks and different textures. And so I think the scale plays quite an important part. S Silent is another one. Um, at least relative to other spaces it's quite quiet and I think I would stop there how do you experience this collective while you're still doing your own stuff I think to some of to some degree I wouldn't say my own stuff because so much of it has been influenced by the other people here by the conversations and yeah, and beyond conversations, like hard skills that I didn't have before that I've been taught here and have the opportunity to, to immediately explore. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I would, I would say it has had a massive impact discussing ideas, especially with people who are familiar with this area mm -hmm. um, and sort of hearing what they have to say and and like meditating on that and, and thinking through and and trying things mm. massive impact and your overall experience with this process like it's practiced here did you basically come for two days you've been driving driving around you know see the various spaces and then you are on your own so to speak you know to find your way through this how did you experience this process? I think to a degree it was quite a natural progression. Um, knowing what I was coming here for. Even if it wasn't specifically clear to me what I would be doing. Or like the full scope of what I would be doing. But driving around knowing that the purpose of the driving around is that you would know where you are or know what to look for or you know like be familiar with the other works that have been done in the space and things like that so I don't feel those first two days with that or starting to work on the actual sculpture was that big of a transition just because I'm I'm looking at things in quite a similar way that I did when I first got here with the work in mind Okay. Yeah. What kind of role does the right spot play? I mean, I've heard this, you know, I'm not doing any kind of artwork here besides, you know, talking to the people and creating podcasts. But this is something I've heard quite often that I haven't found my spot yet or I found the perfect spot. What is it about this right or not right spot? For me personally, it was quite practical. Um, I'm not a religious person, I'm barely even a spiritual person. For me, the even ideas like connecting to the land, um, like I sort of got here and I wasn't really sure what that meant or what that's supposed to feel like. So I, I started with the practical stuff. I knew I wanted quite a flat area. Um, I was quite, quite attracted to the dark rocks. Um, my other work in paintings is often like I use a lot of black and like dark gray and things like that. So seeing the rocks and that that texture was what sort of drew me to that spot first. And we, we looked at a few ones. Um, some of them weren't the one for those reasons, um, especially layout, like how the sculptures orientated to the surrounding bushes and you know things like that. That being said, I have taken some time to walk around barefoot and sort of going through the rituals that I would say some people have in air quotes connected to the land with and I have sort of started experiencing something I won't say it's necessarily of a, a spiritual nature or anything like that but 
I think all the little factors add up to something meaningful. Um, and also being in that space while physically working on the sculpture, it started to mean things to me. Um, for example? For example, I knew I didn't want to use too much material to make it or for it to cover too much surface area, so to speak. Um, so the, the clay that I took wasn't quite the, the full scale of, of what the sculpture was supposed to be. So I envisioned it half, half sunk into the earth. And as I was wor working with that and also writing um, poetry in the evenings, it sort of started to play together of this, I'm walking on this land, like what is my relation to the earth and things like, you know, the similar molecules and atoms that are and elements that are in my body are also in this ground and the things that I'm eating off this ground and the dust sticking to my feet and it, it all contributes to influencing who I am at this time. And so the, with so much of the material that is already there feeding into the sculpture, its surface and seeing the figure almost emerge out of the earth, that's become very meaningful to me um, in this work and also how I feel in this space. So that I think that's as concrete an example as I could as I could give. It makes quite a lot of sense to me, yes, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> uh, the last thing if you would recommend or if you would have to give someone who wants to come here for the first time an advice, what would it be? I would try to say as little as possible, to be honest. Um, I had very little idea of, of what exactly to expect. Um, aside from what I'd seen on social media, there wasn't a very complete description of how much electricity or how much Wi-Fi or if there'll be hot showers or flushing toilets. I didn't know any of that. Um, and I guess that's also a bit on me. I didn't do too much research and that would lead to my advice, which is to just be open. Um, just commit and see what happens. I would say. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs>